Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of our ladies, you are now tuned into the Prince of Investment, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado, via Honolulu, Hawaii. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time. So we are going to jump straight into it. So the first thing that we are going to discuss: President Biden addresses cryptocurrencies. President Biden on cryptocurrencies. This was very huge. About two days ago, you saw cryptocurrencies make a nice little move to the upside. They went up about uh, across the board, 8%, 10%. Nothing to crazy, nothing to note. But you know, cryptocurrency, they've been asleep now for the last six or seven months. You haven't heard anybody speak about them, haven't, haven't heard anybody talk about them. And the last little joke they came from, or they, they gotten, came from the one and only President Joe Biden. So what did he say? What was he talking about? No big surprise here, but it kind of reiterates a concern about I've always had with cryptocurrencies. Let me first disclose. Do I own cryptocurrencies? Yes, I do have some cryptocurrencies. I think I got some Bitcoin and Ethereum and uh, I can't even think of the other ones, the Doge and the whatever the case may be, one of those random ones that came out. But anyway, the whole point is. I can't remember all the cryptocurrencies I even own. Nothing of note. I don't own anything crazy. If cryptocurrencies was to go up 100% tomorrow, um, I won't be running up and down the street or whatever. I say, oh, that was nice, whatever, right? But anyway, the whole point is, we all knew that I always told people, when you look at currencies, how many people walk around with dollars and coins in their pockets? Not that many of us walk around with dollars and coins because a lot of us don't utilize dollars and coins. You can live your life perfectly fine, with just grabbing your wallet or your purse or whatever you carry your personal identification with and get around the country just fine, get around the day, your day with no um no actual dollars or coins. So what does that what's that what does that tell you? We're already on a digital currency. Meaning for prime example, let's say you get up in the morning and you decide to stop by Starbucks and grab a cup of coffee. You can pay that with your Apple Pay. You can pay that with a credit card. You can just tap it with your phone, tap it with your car, and you're good to go. Then you could jump into your car, your truck, or have a vehicle, motor transportation you have, go on, go over to the next gas station, buy yourself some gas, and you can tap or swipe a card or insert a card to pay for that. Then you can go into your job or whatever you do for work, and then at lunchtime, you can go take your lunch, buy your lunch with your digital pay, and then go back home and enjoy the rest of your day at dinner or whatever you do. So the thing is, we're already on a digital currency. We're just not on a cryptocurrency. Then people say, well, a cryptocurrency is fake. It's, it's not backed by anything. But then again, we got to look at the U.S. dollar. Y'all know we love the gold standards, right? I think that was back in, I know it was President Nixon's 70s, 80s, something like that. When we love the gold standard and we became on a fiat currency, what is really backing our dollar right now? Our dollars are our good faith. I always tell people, our person, my personal belief is it's our United States military. Our military is the one that give us the might and give our currency the might. If we did not have our military, uh, I don't. I think our currency would go to crap very fast. Look what happened to Russia when look look at look what happened to Russia when they had look what happens to Russia's Russia's currency when they decided to um, invade Ukraine. I don't have a little tongue twisted there. Getting Russia and Russia currencies, things like that. But Russia currency. What happened when they invaded Ukraine? You see that their uh, currency. I think it's the rubles. Went ahead and declined big time. Why did it decline so much? A big thing is people lose faith into their government. It's the same thing that we see happening here, right? People say, well, we, we can just print up money, throw it in the economy. Yeah, we did that. We did it in 2020, 2021. That's why we have 7.9% inflation currently, right? And the whole point I'm saying all of this is saying we're not too far from a cryptocurrency already. Now, President Biden, he gets in. He, he releases a speech on March 9th, two days ago, if I'm not mistaken. He releases a speech. He says, hey, um, yesterday, I think it was. Hey, guess what? Cryptocurrencies, I'm going to address you. I'm going to talk about why you're important, all the good things like that. The first thing is, he says, um, he spoke about policy. Now, it was a pretty long doctrine. I went in and kind of got out of the things that he was saying. He was a little long when in his policy that he wrote, said some good stuff, but it was a little redundant things that we already kind of knew. The first thing he said was he wanted to create a policy for digital assets. 
The biggest thing that he was concerned with was protection of these digital assets. For prime example, you have all these coins. We got Dogecoin, Safecoin, Safe Moon, This Moon, Go to the Moon, Dogecoin, Elon, Elon Musk Killer, the Dogecoin Killer, all these currencies that are out there, tokens, whatever you may call them. You, uh, you got Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, but then a lot of people don't even know who owns these uh, currencies. We don't know where the servers are. We don't know where this information is coming from. We don't know anything about them. This is why it is very big when it comes down to protection. For prime example, look, let's take a look at what's happening to Russia right now. Russia right now, has America really lift one finger to fight Russia going into Ukraine? No. The only thing we've done, we have gotten to financial warfare. That's what we're doing. First, we said, hey, we're going to issue sanctions. Then we're going to issue more sanctions. Then we said, hey, we're going to cut off your, one of your main arteries to your economy, your oil. This is financial warfare. If nobody won't buy from you, guess what? You will slowly die off. For prime example, people always say, hey, yeah, we love to support minority-owned businesses. But guess what? How many times do you go do business with minority-owned businesses? Think about it. When your favorite celebrity or athlete or whatever the case they may be, when they go out and they do something wrong that's unpopular, that may be against what the masses think, what's the first thing they do? They go in and attack their sponsorship. When attacking their sponsorship, what is that? That is attacking their money. So financial warfare. Prince, why are you bringing up financial warfare? I thought you were talking about President Biden and cryptocurrencies. This is exactly why I'm talking about this, because you want to know where who's feeding you and who can hurt you the most. Right. You always want to know who's feeding you and who can hurt you the most. I forgot. Uh, this is one of the things that Buffett was saying in one of his books. When you see a company that makes all their money one direction or one way, <clears throat> Facebook, Facebook makes 95, 98% of its earnings come from revenue streams, right? So when you see all of the bulk of the money coming in one way, if something was to happen to that, that would destroy the entire company. If something would happen was to happen to Facebook advertising, it would destroy the entire company. Let's say we all, uh, President Biden says, hey, let's go ahead, guys, let's jump on Bitcoin. Let's jump on the Bitcoin train. We all jump on a Bitcoin train, kind of find out Bitcoin is owned by China or Russia, an adversary. If they're owned by an adversary, let's say if China or Russia gets upset with us, they can with one finger disrupt our entire economy. This is why it's very important to know who is backing what and to know who can hurt you the most, things like that or whatever when it comes down to finances. Because people love to think about muscle, but you can't have muscle without finances. Everybody knows that in order to have uh, muscle on the streets, you got to have financing. And in order to have finance on the street, you got to have muscle. Military, police, you need that to go hand in hand. It's the same thing we're seeing right here, right now, is that we must know who's backing, backing these things. Because this can lead to his big second concern, which is national security. So if we can have someone that can easily hack into our financial system and do all these things with our currency, that'll be very bad. Can you imagine somebody hacking to the New York Stock Exchange and change the prices of everything? That would be crazy, right? And it's not a far fit to see it won't, it, it won't happen someday. The next thing is the black market. We all know that cryptocurrencies was notorious for being in the black market where people were going on buying body parts, buying all type of doing all type of crimes, the underworld. So guess what? You know, if America, our, I can already tell you, if we decide to go down the cryptocurrencies world, we are going to create our own. It would be crazy for us to go out there to get Ethereum and Litecoin, Bitcoin, not saying anything is wrong with them, but do we really know the integral pieces? How can we control it? You must know and control your currency or someone can hold the whole country hostage. So the, uh, you know, of course, American can build his own money. They yeah, you utilize something called a CDBC. This is the central banking digital currency, central banking digital currency that they are exploring that they will do. They've been talking about for a while, but President Biden is saying within 180 days, he wants reports of the pros and cons of the future spending. Why? Because we want to be the world leader financially. We don't want to be behind. We, I think it was Venezuela went to a whole digital currency, either here in Ethereum, uh, here in Colorado, the governor of Colorado was talking about Ethereum being a big digital currency, a digital state. But the whole point is people are looking for different ways to invest money and things like that. 
So right here, he talked about national security pilot, uh, policies, protections, the central, uh, make sure I got that right, the central bank of digital currencies. All these things are highly important and very important. Why these things are so important? These things are very important due to the simple fact that um, we don't want to get left behind. We're already on a digital currency. We just haven't made it official. And President Biden is looking into it to see what are the ways that we can tap our toe into it, tap our toe into this digital currency world to make ourselves into a better place. So also with that, that made a big move in the cryptocurrency space, in the cryptocurrency world, because I think this is probably the first time we heard, a pre I didn't hear President Trump talk about cryptocurrencies too much. Some people in his administration I kind of heard about, but this is the first time I heard a sitting president come out and talk about digital currencies and cryptocurrencies and this is why you saw that jolt into cryptocurrencies uh two days ago because everybody knows america is getting its way into moving its way into the cryptocurrency space and we are the world leader financially and we don't want to be left behind but we got to make sure we do it right so president biden pretty much uh sent out taskers to all his people to generate a report to him uh, from the federal reserve to the secretary of treasury monetary people come back and let him know the pros and cons of a digital currency, right? So with that being said, when we look at this, the digital currency, it is coming and we're going to have it. But that's one thing. That's President Biden on cryptocurrencies. Another thing I want to get into is today we got our fresh inflation reports. It's coming from the CPI, the Consumer Price Index was released today, and the highest area was fuel oil at 7.7%. Fuel oil went up 7.7% in February, which we could already know. Everybody, majority of people you utilize gas in some way or some form. And when they went to go utilize that gas, guess what happened? We all saw the prices at the pump, which wasn't surprising at all. We saw the Russia-Ukraine thing going on, and we we're at inflation. Our total overall inflation is now at 7.9%. Inflation is at 7.9%. Fuel oil is at 7.7%. So these are big deals, big things that we're seeing going around the country. Now, as we can see, as oil prices increase, we're seeing our gas prices increase. And I think it's going to be here for the short term because we know every summer it gets hot. And when it gets hot, everybody loves to travel. Here we got spring break coming up, fall about a summer. This is the time that people travel the most, get on the planes the most, these things that require the most gas. And it's just unfortunate that right now we're at uh, at odds with the, the world's number three producer of oil, which is Russia. I think we was getting 667 million gallons or something like that, according to the EIA, which is the Energy Information Administration. Please don't quote me on the exact number, but we were a pretty big um, consumer of oil as well from Russia. And to now see that just diminish across the world um, as we scramble to find other ways to meet this demand is pretty, uh, pretty big thing. So... There we have it right right there. President Biden, he spoke about cryptocurrencies, gave a nice little jolt to cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all coins had a nice little jolt up. And, you know, y'all drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about President Biden and his move into cryptocurrencies and studies to make it um, become a thing here in America. We already have cryptocurrencies already, but for America to have its own cryptocurrency, it will happen. Our dollar is already digital and we're not going to let things um, hit hit through there. But what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and I mean a quick break, and we're going to be right back. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back with more on the Prince of Investment right here with your host, Prince Dykes. On April 1st at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, ThinkTech will be presenting a 90-minute webinar panel program called Burning Global Issues. This will be an examination of six continents by thought and community leaders living in or expert in those continents discussing burning issues affecting each of them, how they relate to the prospects for functioning democracy, and what we can learn from all of that. The moderator for the program is Pamela Spradlin, a 30-year Foreign Service veteran who has served as U.S. Ambassador and Consular Official in a number of overseas posts. The panel is comprised of Carl Baker, Senior Advisor of Pacific Forum on China and Asia, Rupmati Khandakar, Director of Global Relations Forum on India, Elsa Jark Hadian, a consultant with Project Expedite Justice on the Middle East, Gilbert Nuagira, an economist in Kampala, Uganda, on East Africa, Carl Ackerman, of the Social Studies Faculty at Punahou School on Eastern Europe, and Juan Tello, 
a business attorney in Bogota, Colombia, on Latin America. The program is sponsored by Project Expedite Justice. We hope you will attend, and that this program will help you better understand these important global issues. Please go to our website, thinktechhawaii.com, and register. Mahalo. And we are back here live on the Prince of Investment, coming to you guys and girls live, all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado, via Honolulu, Hawaii. Ladies and gentlemen, we talked about it. President President Biden, he talked about his cryptocurrencies, um, released his report, pretty extensive report on the White House, but it's very significant how he's issuing orders to have studies done and to have his committees get back to him on ways that we can move into a digital currency. Now, also, what does this mean for the cryptocurrencies is that uh, this is a very big thing, a very big move is saying that, hey, the world's number one leader in finance is talking about cryptocurrencies, making that move and leap. And President Biden said that he doesn't want America to be behind. He wants to be the leader of the cryptocurrency space. So he wants to do research because, as we know, cryptocurrencies can't be that hard to create because one is being created every single day. So someone as powerful and as knowledgeable as America, you know America is going to come out with its own currency. I do not think that America will utilize something like Doge or Safecoin or the Elon or the Bitcoin or Ethereum. I think they're going to get their things. They're going to mimic it and they're going to make sure it's safe and controlled by America because it would be very idiotic of us to go out and get a cryptocurrency we know little to nothing about that will give someone the power and influence over, over us just like the example I used before the break when we buy so much oil for Russia that we say, hey, you know what, Russia, since you don't want to play, McDonald's pulls out of Russia. Yum Brands pulls out of Russia. Yum, which owns Pizza Hut, KFC, and it's one more company in there. Pizza Hut, KFC and Taco Bell, the Yum Brands own those. They pulled out of uh, Russia. McDonald's pulled out of Russia. Coca-Cola pulls out of Russia. So guess what? That puts their economy in dis dismay. And it also kind of pisses off their citizens that they can't get their ice cold, fresh Coca-Cola. And their maybe uh, Big Mac with cheese or <laughs> whatever the case may be. So those are big things that you're seeing. And that interrupts their supply chain, not only because of McDonald's, but, you know, McDonald's had to have a supply chain to get the inventory and products into Russia. All those supply points and warehouses are now losing out on those things. So those things are not good uh, right there. So with that being said, we talked about everything that's going on from oil and all the way down to cryptocurrencies with President Biden and why he's uh, pushing those things. And also President Biden, what he's trying to do now. We're well, not trying to, but he did. Um, you know, America, we keep our own oil reserve. We keep our own oil reserve just for situations like this. And the president turns on the oil reserve to try to help push down gas prices. But we all know prices are not controlled by value. Prices are controlled by supply and demand. You know, right now, people, companies know that, hey, we can raise our price by a quarter or a dollar. Nobody would even know, nor would they even care. So when we look at this, um, we see that President Biden released 60 million, 60 million barrels of oil, according to the emergency, not emergency, but the Energy Information Administration. So he released his own oil to kind of put down, to kind of curb that supply that's missing coming from Russia. But the thing about it is a lot of our allies use Russian oil. A lot of our allies utilizes Russian oil to um, heat the homes of a lot of homes in Europe. So Europe is saying they're trying to wean themselves off of Russia oil by the end of this year of 2022. And America is saying that, hey, they're banning the uh, import of Russian oil, which kind of comes funny because all the major corporations had already said they're going to do that. But he goes out and says it anyway. But um, very good stuff here. A lot of things is going on for investors. Investors, the biggest thing that we're going to be concerned with, I have to look at my uh, calendar. I think it's next week or within the next week or two, the Federal Reserve, they're going to have the control over interest rates. We just got our inflation rate at 7.9%. But what does that mean for interest rates? That's what all investors are going to have their eyes on because we want to see what the Federal Reserve is going to do with interest rates, which they have to be risen at this point. How much are they going to raise them by? Are they going to have a knee-jerk reaction and do 0.5 or 1%? Or are they going to do what everybody expect, which is going to be about 0.25? That's what I think it's going to be because that's how we lowered it with Jan, Jan, Janet Yellen. When she was raising and lowering them, she always did 0.25, wait a minute, 
do 0.25, let it settle out for a minute, then do another 0.25. She didn't do a knee-jerk reaction. But uh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to conclude today's episode and topic. We talked about it. President Biden, cryptocurrency memorandum that he put out, uh, sending the cryptocurrency world not into a frenzy, but into a happy space. And also with oil going in at 7.7% inflation starting of last month with the world's number three producer of oil now in conflicts with America and the rest of the world. What does that mean for oil prices as we go into the most traveled time? We've ripped our mask off and we're going into spring break. Then we're going into the summer. What does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? So um, into the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy y'all see me doing around the globe. My name is Prince Dykes. This is the Prince of Investment. Peace, be safe. I'm out and thank you.